I build my own fishing rods, and I use a hand wrapper and a 9 RPM motor. But once I saw how Flexcoat builds rods, I realized I was doing it the wrong way. So we got the 2-in-1 power wrapping and power finishing machine. And boy is this thing a game changer. First, you can dial your speed from 40 to 420 RPM. And you can have it run by itself. And then you can switch either forward or backward. And I can stop this at any time by just grabbing the clutch. Now I switch it to foot pedal mode and can manually turn on the motor. It also includes these three roller stand supports that you can adjust to hold your rod and slide them side to side. Here I'm going to start building a rod and see how it goes. Now I'm gluing on a guide by heating it up and then rubbing it in that glue there. It's really nice because you can lock it in place and then make sure it's perfectly lined straight up and down with your real seat also. I can also store a lot of stuff back behind here on this 8 foot table. Now let's get started to wrap. Just wrapping around these stands and I'll go through that little slider there, dial the tension. And uh, it's really nice to have this slider. So I'm just going to start it off by wrapping it around just like a regular wrap. Just wrap it around that tag end. And then we can start uh, power wrapping. I'm going to cut my tag off. And wrap it down this plank. Now I'm going to insert a trim. And just using the clutch, I can spin it pretty fast. Much faster than the regular hand wrapping was. Make sure it's all tight, and then I can start the wrapping again. Slide my braid up there and wrap it to the tip. Not too far though. Cut it off, slide it through the tag end, and pull that through on the side of the blank. Pull everything tight. I'm going to pull a little gap and then cut right there in it. Burnish that back and pull these trims tight. Now after they're pretty snug, I'm going to trim them off. Alright, here's another demonstration. I'm going to heat up that guide foot again, rub it in the glue, and position it perfectly over that mark. Now we're starting that wrap again. Now I can start power wrapping. Before I go too far though, I'm going to want to cut that tag end off. And I wrap down about halfway to add that trim in again. And I can start the power wrapper up again and wrap this down to the end until I'm ready to put my braid back in. Cut the tag, put it through, pull that through, make sure everything's nice and tight. Now I'm going to cut everything off again and I will switch out my power wrapping setup for my finishing setup. Now I'm pouring out my finish. 
measuring it really easily with the syringes and those caps inside. I make sure it's equal portions. And now I just put it in my mixer machine. And set a timer for three minutes. Once that's done, I pour it out into my tinfoil covered plate and I can start finishing. The motor is dialed to about 200 RPMs and put a little finish dab on that tip top and then work these little guides down here. Make sure that I saturate all the thread. And don't go too far on the edges. Down to these bigger guides. It's really fun to do finish like this. A lot more fun than I was doing before with the slow motor. Just go up towards that guide foot. And make sure it saturates. And make sure it's pretty smooth. Doesn't matter too much though, because I'm going to come back over and take some off. Here around the hook keeper part. And on the winding checks. Make sure it runs up on that winding check pretty well, not on it, but in that gap there. Now I'm just going to heat all everything up to saturate right in the threads really good. And uh, to get in the tunnels between the thread and the guide. Now I'm just going to go through and remove the extra finish. I like to remove it enough that I see the texture of the thread. I can tell because the sheen is rough. You just gotta make sure I don't go too far on those edges though, just enough. So it makes a really perfect and quick, quick process. Just takes them off of the little guides, not much to take off though. After that, I'm going to let it dry for at least 8 hours and come back and then I'm going to take a razor and remove those little fuzzies you can see. Makes a really smooth finish for the second coat. Just barely skim that over the fuzzies. Don't get too deep into it though if you have your thread showing really well. Just make sure it's pretty even. getting this here so I'm at the end the tags are usually the ones that are showing most now I pour finish again for the second coat and put that in the mixer for three minutes again pour it out and I get started again now this is the coat that you'll be seeing as the finished product so make sure it's nice the quicker you do it the better just Make sure it's even though. Do little touch ups and let it run, and it should just come back to it and check how it is and do minor adjustments. Just gonna make sure I get all of the finish on there though, not missing any spots. And come up on top of those edges a little bit. Not extending them too much though, but overlapping them. Extra careful down here. Once I'm happy with how it turns out, I'm going to introduce some heat and just touch it over again and then let it dry again for at least 24 hours until I fish with it. I'm very pleased with the finished product. I recommend checking out the Flexcoat DC777 at flexcoat.com.
Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share.